I still don't understand why we couldn't have just taken the light rail. It's faster and it's more environmentally friendly. And more expensive. Why would I take the train when I can just drive there for free? Oh, for free, eh? Do you know how much gas costs nowadays? Not to mention how terrible it is for the environment. Our infrastructure is way too car-centric. Why can't we be more like other countries who focus on other modes of transportation? Oh please, you're just saying that because you still don't got a license. Aren't you like 25 or something? Okay, fine. But we should at least be switching over to all electric vehicles so we don't continue to dirty our earth. You know, electric vehicles aren't as environmentally friendly as you think. Those grids are powered by factories that produce just as much fossil fuels as the oil industry does. If you ask me, I think we should be aiming more towards water-powered vehicles. Water-powered cars? That's not a thing. Is it? It sure is. You see, I've been doing some research, and it turns out it is indeed possible to power cars using primarily water. Water is, after all, the source of all life, and three quarters of our planet is covered in it. It's abundant, and not to mention that it's constantly being recycled through the atmosphere. And in terms of exhaust, the cars would just emit steam instead of the noxious gas that oil-powered vehicles produce. How much greener can you get? Okay, wow, you seriously need to tell more people about this? Because the fossil fuel industry would be totally done for once people find out that we've had a more abundant and renewable source of energy all this time. Oh, I plan to. It would be cheaper, cleaner, and a lot more efficient if it ever became the norm. I will stop at nothing to share my discoveries with the world. Hey, um, you might want to slow down. We're approaching a very steep hill. Oh, I got it. Uh-oh. What's wrong? The brakes, they're... they're not working! Well, they better start working! We're barreling down this hill towards that big lake! Come on, come on! God damn it, why aren't the brakes working? Someone must have cut them! Oh god, we're gonna die! No, not like this! Ah! Ah! Damn you, big oil! <laughs> so, you like your precious water so much, do ya? Well, why not spend the rest of eternity submerged in it? <laughs> the two targets have been dealt with. Our secret remains safe from the populace. May the oil industry continue to prosper! <laughs> Water. It's 2 o We need it to live. We need it to thrive. But not only does water provide us with life, we use it for many things in our day-to-day -day lives. We use it to clean ourselves. We use it to grow our crops. We use it to keep us cool during extremely hot weather. And we even use it to power some of our machines. Hmm, now that's an interesting concept. Water being used to generate energy. Energy is a precious resource after all, much like water. Without energy, none of the things we use to make our lives easier would be able to function. And neither would our society. But at the same time, our means of generating energy tend to produce waste which takes its toll on our environment, decreasing the quality of life for some people. Take vehicles, for example. Most vehicles are powered using fossil fuels. These cars and trucks produce smog, which can be dangerous and even deadly when released into the air in large amounts. Because we use cars so often to get to where we need to be, this tends to happen a lot in largely populated areas. A growing population means increased usage of automobiles all over the world, which means more pollution. Engineers tried to solve this problem by inventing electric-powered vehicles, but it turns out that those too require fossil fuels to function, and are no more environmentally friendly than their gasoline-fueled counterparts. Not to mention how long it would take to completely transition from gas to electric vehicles. So then what's the solution here? What could we possibly power our cars with that gives off little to no hazardous byproducts as waste and is a resource that we're guaranteed to never run out of? Remember when I said that we could power machines with water? Well, what if I told you that cars could be one of those machines? Believe it or not, there have been a few people who have thought of the idea of powering cars with water. After all, water is two-thirds hydrogen, an element used to generate energy. Hydrogen-powered cars already exist. 
but pure high kicking is notoriously expensive and hard to come by. This is why in 1975, engineer and inventor Stanley Mayer came up with the idea for an engine which extracts the hydrogen from the water, leaving behind nothing but oxygen as waste. So here we have the water fuel cell, as Stanley Mayer called it. This is the water which is pumped into the cell, and then down here we have the water capacitor, which has an electric current run through it. This electric current separates the water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen atoms through a process called electrolysis. Not to be confused with facial electrolysis, a procedure which involves zapping away unwanted facial hair, which I unfortunately cannot afford. But anyway, this type of electrolysis separates hydrogen and oxygen gas atoms and releases them from the capacitor into the rest of the cell. When this happens, the hydrogen atoms are then burned up and used as fuel, while the oxygen atoms are expelled into the air as a waste product. No smog, no pollution, no nothing. Just pure oxygen being placed back into the air which we breathe. Sounds all fine and dandy, right? Well, here's the issue. Separating molecules is a lot easier said than done. The idea sounds good on paper until you realize that it takes a lot of energy to do this. More energy than the cell is able to produce through electrolysis. Making up for the diminishing returns would require an external energy source meaning that we'd most likely have to bring fossil fuels back into the mix, defeating the entire purpose of the operation. But did this stop, Mayer? <laughs> no, for he was determined to make his invention work the way he intended it to. Determined. And so he continued tweaking and researching for the next 20 years. But here's where things start to get a little creepy. The year was 1998. Mayer was attending a business meeting at a local restaurant in Grove City, Ohio, with two Belgian investors discussing the fuel cell and likely the possibility of spreading his invention to other countries. By this point, Mayer was a lot closer to perfecting his water fuel cell, and he was ready to spread the word to a broader audience. As he took a sip of his drink, however, he began to have trouble breathing. He started violently vomiting, his face turned purple, and his airways began to close up. Before collapsing to his death, Stanley Mayer is able to utter the words, They poisoned me! They poisoned me. Those are some pretty ominous last words. But who would want to poison Stanley Mayer, inventor of the water fuel cell? And why? Grove City Police claimed that he had passed away due to a cerebral aneurysm, a condition which tends to target people with high blood pressure. But why would Mayer, who was well aware of his health condition prior to his death, claim to have been poisoned during his last breath instead of trying to warn people that he was having an aneurysm? And why would it have happened just moments after he took a sip of his drink, which his waiter had served to him moments prior? And this won't be the last time that somebody who is attempting to normalize cheap and alternative fuel sources mysteriously disappears. In 2015, Aaron Salter Jr., a retired policeman from Buffalo, New York, developed an engine that was similar to Mayer's. Salter had been working on this project for the past decade prior to that year, and his friend, Khalil M. Diate, showcased Salter along with his invention on his main YouTube channel, and even interviewed the engineer who made it happen. Diate's channel accumulated thousands of views and many comments praising Salter for his ingenuity. Like Mayer's water fuel cell, Salter's engine used electrolysis to separate water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen, and it even came with a cooling and circulation system. The showcased engine appeared to still be a prototype, but considering what Salter's budget was and the resources he had to work with at the time, it was a brilliant feat of engineering, and one that had the potential to revolutionize the world of automobiles if it were to gain more traction. Unfortunately, Salter's life was taken in a 2022 terrorist attack at a local grocery store. Salter worked as a security guard at the store when a mysterious gunman came in and killed 10 people, including Salter. That same year, Porsche released E-Fuel, an electrolysis engine which uses wind energy to extract carbon dioxide from the air and convert it into gasoline. Although water is not being used for Porsche's new engine, it's a similar idea and the timing between Salter's death and Porsche's release of their new e-fuel engine is a tad bit suspicious. 
Who exactly was that gunman who laid waste to those ten people on that fateful day? And is it possible that they were sent to assassinate Salter? I don't know about you guys, but the idea that those oil industry bigwigs are trying to suppress these new technologies, and even going so far as to hunt people down just for the sake of continuing to turn a profit, well, pisses me off to say the least. But I ain't gonna take it lying down. In fact, I am going to make sure, using this documentary, that everybody nationwide finds out about Big Oil's dirty secrets. I mean, sure, the technology may not be perfected just yet, and even if it were, it would take us some time to wean ourselves off of fossil fuels completely. But mark my words, water will be the future of transportation, and fossil fuels will no longer have a place in either our vehicles or in our atmosphere. <sighs> Man, all this motivational speaking is really making me thirsty. <laughs> that there cyanide in your water, sonny boy, and it'll be the last thing you drink. That'll teach you to try and put big oil out of business. <laughs> Another one bit the dust, boss, and I'll wipe out as many as it takes, just as long as you pay me a decent wage, see? Oh. Oh, that's all I'm getting, eh? Alright. Might want to sleep with the one eye open tonight. <laughs>